Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gene Overstreet, and I am uh, pleased to welcome you to the uh, National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific and the reflaying ceremony that we have here today. Good morning, young Marines. Good morning. Young Marines, stand at ease, please. You know what I get to do? I get to introduce people that love this country, that stand up for this country, that not only stand up for this country, but they love telling you about this country. So uh, I'm going to introduce our first uh, uh, keynote speaker. He's our executive director for the Young Marines, Colonel Bill Davis. Sir. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And Young Marines from all the country, thank you for showing up here, for working hard all year to make it happen and especially all the adult volunteers for which this program wouldn't exist without your assistance. Young Marines, Aten Hut! Oh, about face. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go about face. Young Marines, Eddies! Marine Jansen, come on up. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in humble gratitude, we gather here today to honor and remember our veterans who have sacrificed their lives to protect this nation. We are thankful for this beautiful country and the freedoms we have. We recognize the great cost at which those freedoms have come. We are thankful for the leaders of our nation and our military. We ask thee to bless them with guidance as they lead and defend our country. Heavenly Father, please protect those who are deployed. Please bless their families with comfort and support. Please bless the citizens of this country and the people throughout the world that they might be wise with the freedoms they have been given. We ask thee to bless us with thy spirit during this gathering as we honor and remember the men and women who have given their lives for this country. May their families find healing in the memory of their loved ones. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Well done. You know, that service to our nation is a commitment. It's a commitment of men like Sergeant Major Overstreet, who had a lifetime of service in the Marine Corps, and now, probably for almost more time than you were in the Marine Corps, serving others in the community, not just the NCOA Association of America, where you're the president for many years, but also with the young Marines for over two decades of service to us. It's about the service of those in Pearl Harbor, some of whom sacrificed their very lives on that unknown attack but many of whom after those attacks continue to serve in their communities and in the military for the rest of their lives. It's about the service of recently we lost one of our adult volunteers, Mr. Dan Long, out of the 3rd Division. Mr. Long, with 22 years of commitment to the Marine Corps, retired and continued to serve his community as an emergency manager and continued to serve his nation's youth as a member of the Young Marines program until he recently passed. That continuity of service is something that we value very much. It continues to yesterday when we lost several marine aviators in the Pacific who were out serving their country. The service sometimes comes with the sacrifice and we all understand that. All of us that are veterans know that is part of our commitment to our nation. For our young Marines, I hope that they continue to learn the lessons of service and why it is so important that you give back to your country for all the blessings that you receive by being part of this great nation. The service of the next gentleman I want to introduce as well, Commander Reistad, the national director, the national commander of the American Legion, is a gentleman who served his country. Who was, sir? I had to translate. He was in the Army. It's all good. There's another soldier right back there who's got his back, as it should be. He served his country, but on his retirement, he continued to serve his community by becoming a police officer for over two decades in Fairfax County. And on his retirement there, continues to serve in law enforcement and consulting. And in his spare time, which many of our vault volunteers would understand, having a job, having lives and families, and still continuing to volunteer in your off hours, in his spare time, he has been a leader and a server in the American Legion. sir. Thank you so much for coming to participate in our ceremony and honor, honoring us with your service and your participation. I yield the floor to the commander of the American Legion. All right. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. it. Thank you. Right. This week, we are in a special place to honor and observe a generation that gave everything in defense of our freedom. Many of the service members who were here on December 7th, 1941, 
we're not much older than the young Marines that are here today. Some were just teenagers. After the attack, teenagers from every corner of the United States rushed to their local military recruiters to sign up and defend America in its greatest time of need. These young men, and yes, there were young women who played a pivotal role in that war effort as well, sacrificed their youth so that liberty may grow old. One such hero was Jack Lucas. At age 17, he saved the lives of three fellow Marines on Iwo Jima and was seriously wounded by covering a grenade with his body. He earned the Medal of Honor for his heroism. And after he earned the medal, the highest military award possible, the battle-hardened Marine returned to high school to earn his diploma. That's who these heroes of the greatest generation were. They were everyday Americans who accomplished extraordinary deeds to defeat a powerful enemy, and then they returned home to resume their roles as ordinary American citizens. Of course, this great cemetery is a powerful reminder that not all returned. It's important that we remember these heroes. If you see a person wearing a Pearl Harbor survivor cap, shake that hero's hand and thank that veteran for his service. We must not take this great generation for granted. They won't always be with us, even though their legacy surely will be. God bless our young Marines. God bless our World War II veterans. And God bless America. Semper Fi. Thank you. It is my honor to introduce my partner, or one of my partners this year, in the leadership of the American Legion family, our national president of the American Legion Auxiliary, the largest women's patriotic organization in America, Ms. Kathy Dungan. Each year, young Marines travel from across the country to Pearl Harbor, where you honor the brave heroes who served our country and risked their lives to protect our freedoms. Just like the young Marines, the American Legion family leadership travels to Pearl Harbor to remember the sacrifices of the heroes we lost on December 7, 1941, and to celebrate those who survived one of the most impactful days in our nation's history. Thank you for what you do every day, and especially all of your work during the month of November when all Young Marines units participate in Young Marines Veterans Appreciation Week, a campaign that challenges all of you to dedicate time to veterans in your local communities. It is now my honor to introduce the other partner of the American Legion family, our National Commander of the Sons of the American Legion, Greg Doc Gibbs. My father taught me many lessons, although not overtly, mostly through his modeling of what it meant to be a man. One of the things I recall one day when we were at a restaurant for dinner, a man came up to our table. He had very short cropped hair and he had a huge scar across the top of his head. He noticed my dad and he said, hey Dick, it's nice to see you again. I just lost my job and I need something as soon as possible or I'm gonna lose my house. Do you have any jobs I could do? I just need a job, he said. My dad said, I'll, I'll see what I can do, call me tomorrow. And that was it, the man left, thanked my dad, we went on with our dinner. So I asked later on, Dad, who was that, who was that guy with that scar on his head? My dad said it was someone he served with and he was wounded by a grenade and captured by the Japanese and in one of Japanese prison camps for a while. I said, well, Dad, do you have a job for him? I don't know, I'll, we'll see, my dad said. I said I'd give him a job and I'll see what I can do. My dad said, that's what fellow Marines do. We help our buddies out. Marines make men. I'm sure they do. They made a great father. Thank you and God bless you.
of great words and words to live by from each of you. And I, I can assure you that uh, our young Marines take it on board and uh, they want to follow in your legacy and your dad's legacy as well. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce not only uh, a, a professional Marine, but a good friend of mine, Sergeant Major Anthony Padero. Young Marine, attach, hut! Do I still have it? You got it. Now when I say aloha, <laughs> you're gonna wake, help me out, wake. right? Here we go. Of course, volume, enthusiasm. Here we go. Everybody, aloha! Young Marines, parade, rush! All right. So are we excited now? Absolutely. Hey, I got to tell you, Catherine and I are so excited to welcome the Young Marines back to Honolulu and those that support Young Marines, because frankly, we need Young Marines now in this country more than ever. I'd like to acknowledge some people present today, specifically a big aloha and mahalo to the National Executive Director and the Chief, Chief Executive Officer of the Young Marines, a personal friend of mine and a Marine who continues to define selfless servant leadership, Colonel Bill Davis, accompanied by his wonderful bride, Brenda, who is also a Marine. But thank you for the second time invitation today. You honor me and Catherine with this privilege to address the next generation of our nation's future leaders. But as I mentioned before, we do have a surprise guest, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps here, Sergeant Major Gene Overstreet, accompanied with his beautiful bride again. Now forgive me all if I stand a little taller, speak a little louder, because when you have the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps present, well, that's what you do. <laughs> but a surprise audible for Colonel Davis to having the National Director of the American Legion today. Thank you, sir, for your words. You grace us with your presence. But more specifically, on behalf of the active duty and our veterans, we appreciate all you're doing to make our family lives and the lives of veterans that much better. To the Vietnam Veterans Association here as well, thank you for all you do. As a brother of a Vietnam veteran, I know directly what you provide on the hill for us to ensure that our Vietnam veterans remain at the forefront of the concerns. And also, to the Marine Corps League, which I am a proud member of the John Bassalone Detachment back in Raritan, New Jersey. Now I'm thinking of switching because if you want to see a really cool Marine Corps League detachment, look at those shirts there. <laughs> but to all these organizations presence, our veteran service organizations, we cannot thank you enough for taking that battle for us to the hill to ensure that our lives and the lives of these young men and women will have a future for America tomorrow. But more importantly, I want to thank the volunteers here today in support of the young Marines. You are the gatekeepers, the guardians, the mentors ensuring that we will have a generation of young men and women that are imbued with the sarkin sank American ideas of patriotism, service before self, and love of country. You all, to the volunteers here, demonstrate what Dr. Albert Schweitzer said. I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, that the ones among you who will really be happy are those who have sought with and found how to serve. So with American volunteers like you serving selflessly, we all will prevail as a great society. But now to the really important folks here today or the reason my boss, Admiral Philip S. Davidson, has allowed me to take off from my daily duties, the young men and women who have volunteered to serve as young Marines. To the young Marines out here today, by answering the call to serve, you can learn at an early age the importance of community involvement and in putting others first. Yes, young Marines, while your friends and classmates are back at home, sitting around playing in another game on whatever video station there might be, you, you are all charting a course that will ensure that we have an America for tomorrow. And as you chart the course of your lives, whether you decide to serve in the military, head to college, or enter the workforce, 
I encourage you all to continue to serve our country in any capacity. You are the next generation of leaders and serving our nation, serving a valued cause is the most honorable way to demonstrate that you have placed others before yourself. There is a memorial stone here at the National Cemetery of the Pacific. In fact, it is the first memorial stone of any youth organization to be dedicated at a national cemetery. And yours, the one from you all reads, Young Marines, a national youth organization, an organization honoring the legacy of our Pacific campaign veterans through education and patriotic volunteerism. So young Marines, as you walk around these hallowed grounds today, remember that this is a place of honor. And remember that one of your former national executive officers told you, you are learning history from those who have made history. Young Marines, when you lead the parade in honor of the 77th commemoration of Pearl Harbor, you will be the ones carrying the banner of living history. You're making that history today. Let it be written that the young Marines today will be the future leaders of tomorrow that will ensure that we have an America that remains the land of the free and the home of the brave. And do me one other thing, young Marines. Go find you out there. Go recruit your friends. Go sell that this young Marines program's active. We need you to find you to fill your ranks. So please do me that favor and recruit another young Marine into your ranks. So folks, if you remember anything from today, it's not the words of another old Sergeant Major. No, it is my hope that you will remember you spent the day in a place of honor. That the men and women here represented the best that our society had to offer. May God bless you all. May God bless the land of the free and the home of the brave, the United States of America. Thank you. Young Marines, lay your wreath. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Young Marines, praise that horn. Oh, there's horn. Marine Corps League, lay your reef. Young Marines, praise it! American Legion, lay your reef. Young Marines, praise that horn. Order horn.
Vietnam Veterans of America, lay your reef. Young Marines, praise it! Harms! Order! Harm! Okay. Thank you so much. Please be seated. So to wrap it up, young Marines, great job for staying steadfast throughout the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending today's ceremony. I will turn to our young Marine with the benediction, if you would. Please rise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gathered here today to honor and remember the men and women who walked through the valley of the shadow of death with valor and selflessness. We remember those that never returned from that valley. They did not lose their lives. They gave them. We lift our hearts in gratitude for all who loyally fought for our freedom, for liberty, truth, and justice. Help us guard the gifts which, for, which their loyalty and devotion passed on to us. May your blessings be upon their families and impart healing and forgiveness. May we always remember the courage and sacrifice of our veterans and those Americans who serve on the front lines of freedom, even now. Bless this nation and keep us ever in your light. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please be seated. And a last great thanks, Sarmi Drover Street, Semper Fi, every day. Thank you for your service and support. Sarmir Spadaro, I'm so motivated. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to work this off the rest of the day to get all that adrenaline out of my system. So thank you all for attending. Thank all of you for the support. With that being said, this concludes the ceremony. Mm -hmm.